Welcome to the 2022 Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Greater Kansas City, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mass Celebration. Join us for our 50th chapter anniversary, Freedom and Justice Now. Our featured keynote speaker is Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie. Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie is an electrifying preacher and an anointed woman of God, serving at the highest level of Episcopacy in the African Methodist Episcopal Church since 2000. McKenzie is a national voice for women, servant leadership, and social justice. Her ministry, which has seen her supervise more than 600 churches around the world, is diverse from sanctuaries and seminaries to corporate boardrooms and national and international seminars and conferences. Also featured tonight is the SCLC Greater Kansas City 50th Anniversary Ensemble led by Reverend Alberta Walker. We are proud to honor our charter members still serving SCLC Greater Kansas City, the Honorable U.S. Congressman Emmanuel Cleaver II, Ms. Ella Tolbert, Brother Leon Dixon, Bishop James D. Tyndall Sr., an Extraordinary Service Leader Honoree, and the Reverend Dr. Samuel E. Mann, an Extraordinary Service Leader Honoree. Tonight, we'll pay special tribute to the late Attorney Taylor Fields Esquire, longtime SCLC GKC board member and community leader. We give a special thank you to our sponsors for their support and donations. Jewish Community Relations Bureau, AJC of Kansas City, The Urban Summit, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. State Celebration Commission, State of Missouri, Evergy, Samuel U. Rogers Health Center, and Mr. Kelvin Simmons. Presenting the 12 point priorities for liberation and justice, the Urban Council of Kansas City, made up of National Black United Front of Kansas City, NAACP of Kansas City, Urban League of Greater Kansas City, SCLC Greater Kansas City, and the Urban Summit. A special historic video will be seen tonight highlighting the victory and the installation of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard street signs here in Kansas City. SCLC is grateful to our host tonight, the Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Wallace S. Hartsfield II, Senior Pastor. It was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We're looking forward to celebrating the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with you tonight. And we want to thank you on behalf of the SCLC GKC board members and staff. Good evening. Try this for a second time. We had some technical difficulties earlier. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were able to welcome our virtual participants to the celebration this evening. Again, my name is Wesley Fields, and I am chairman of the board of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Greater Kansas City. It is a pleasure to be here with you this evening as we celebrate our 50th anniversary um, as our chapter here in Kansas City. Um, I'm going to start off uh, this evening uh, by first acknowledging uh, Dr. Uh, Wallace S. Hartsfeld II for welcoming us into this grand edifice for this celebration. Uh, he has been a supporter and has been with SCLC for as long as I can remember. Unfortunately, he is ill this evening 
So we'd like to extend um, our prayers and our thoughts with him. Uh, and in his place, though, is Deacon Lawton, who is going to come and, and bring a welcome to us. So I'm going to ask Deacon Lawton to come forward uh, for that welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Fields, and to all of those who are present tonight, especially to our clergy and also to our speaker on this evening, uh, Bishop uh, Vashti. We do welcome you here at Metropolitan. Our pastor, Dr. Hartsfield, has already mentioned that he's under the weather on tonight, but he says that Metropolitan is a church in the heart of the city with a heart for the city. And so that's why we are here on this evening. I want to commend SCLC for maintaining the dream of Dr. King. So many times we see on social media things that really don't have any application to the life of Martin Luther King III. And so I want to commend SCLC for maintaining the dignity of Dr. King throughout the years. Metropolitan has been host to this wonderful gathering on a number of occasions. Unfortunately, uh, due to this COVID pandemic, uh, we have not been able to gather as we have in the past. But it's just so good to see those of you that are here on tonight and also for those who are watching virtually. We welcome you to Metropolitan and we pray that this will be a great evening to honor Dr. King. We know that the Greater Kansas City Chapter of SCLC has one of the largest hostings of King celebrations throughout America. And for that, I commend SCLC. <laughs> Finally, I would like to say to you, if our pastor would say it if he were here, for those of you who will be coming to the mic speaking because of this pandemic that we're in, we're asking you to please maintain the wearing of your mask. And it may mean that we may have to project a little bit louder in order to uh, go out on the, the media system. We're doing the best that we can, but we need you to cooperate with us also. So if you're coming to the mic to speak or to sing, we ask that you would please continue to wear your mask and also wear your mask while you're here in the building. We have been very fortunate over these last two years. We have not had a major breakout of this COVID-19 virus as many other facilities have had, and we're grateful to God for that. And we want to continue that. We want to continue being a church in the heart of the city with a heart for the city. You're welcome to Metropolitan. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me, that you're doing and that I know that you're going to do.
Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, the SCLC 50th anniversary ensemble led by Reverend Alberta Walker. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask that Reverend Dr. Faith Allen, senior pastor of Jameson Memorial Temple, CME Church, come forward and provide prayer. Amen. Let us unite together in prayer. Consecrate me now in thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Lord, as we're gathered here tonight, I'm just asking that you would draw us nearer, Lord, to the hope-filled spirit of the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., the spirit of oneness, the spirit of peace, the spirit of justice, and the spirit of rising up. Draw us nearer to realize that love is in need of love today, that hope is in need of hope today, that peace is in need of peace today. Consecrate our hearts today, our minds today, our spirits today, to continue to keep the charge of Dr. Martin Luther King of restoring the beloved community. We come this evening knowing that even in these times of unrest, injustice, persecution, prosecution, and unfair institutions, we still know that your truth is marching on. We come tonight to celebrate our oneness. We come to celebrate our togetherness, our unity, our hope, and our love of all God's people. Let us leave here tonight, Lord, with our heads held high, holding to your unchanging hand, knowing that Dr. Martin Luther King's dream is still alive because it is alive and burning in us, and we are all the better for it. It is in your mighty name that we come on this evening to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, and thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do. In your mighty name we pray. And we say amen. We say amen. We say yes. We say yes. Let the church say amen. And say man again. Won't you put your hands together and give God praise that we're ever able to be in this place tonight. There have been so many impediments to our fulfilling our goal and task of putting on this 2022 Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. And we have overcome those tasks not been overwhelmed by those impediments. And I'm sure you too have things that have come in your journey that you have had to overcome and continue during these turbulent times to fulfill God's purpose in your life. I wonder if anybody in here wants to shout hallelujah because you have overcome all of the impediments 
of this season. Our technical difficulties have made it challenging for us tonight to present this program for those who are joining us virtually. We're asking those who anticipated to join us on Facebook to join us at sclcgkc.org. You can view and participate in this program on sclcgkc.org. One of the impediments was the inability of our friend and brother, Brother Stacy Rhymes, to produce the historic video of SCLC tonight, and he sends his apologies and regrets. It will be completed at our April 4th MLK commemoration coming up in 2022. As a substitute for this, we invite you to hear these words about the legacy of Dr. King and the history of SCLC that streams from 1963 and 1968 when Dr. King was launching along with a host of other organizations and activists and advocates of the Poor People's Campaign in the United States of America. In 1963, Dr. King said this, in a sense, we're come to our nation's capital to cash a check. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the colored people a bad check, which, which, which has come back marked, you know what it's been marked, insufficient funds. Dr. King said, we refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash this check a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. That was 1963. Here we are in 2022. And for black people in Kansas City, the history tells us and the present day tells us that that check is still coming back you guessed it, in sufficient funds. SCLC and our advocates call upon Kansas City to make a renewed collective commitment to create a community and a city in which no person is unsheltered and no person lacks safety from nature's harsh winds. Concurrently, the problems of limited, real affordable housing and safe, permanent housing of dignity for the working poor must be in a priority in a city that continues to erect corporate shelter, luxury condominiums and apartments to an ever-creasing downtown skyline in Kansas City's formal metric of affordable housing, it is deemed that just over $1,100 per month on rent is supposed to be affordable, but not for the working poor. One of four, that's 25% of children in Kansas City, Missouri, live in poverty. For black children, it is even worse. The correlating realities to poverty, such as health deficiencies, technological divide, violence and crime, compound poverty's pain so that there are health deficiencies, homelessness, ill health, and ultimately imprisonment or early death. 
Hear this. Kansas City's poverty rate is 17.2%. One of every 5.8 residents living under poverty level, and that equals to 81,000 Kansas Cityans, barely those that can fit into Arrowhead Stadium. What's more, of those 81,000, 37,000 are black, meaning that 28% of the total estimated 135 blacks in Kansas City are poor, the highest poverty rate of any demographic in the city. If Dr. Wallace S. Hartsfield the first were here tonight, he would say, Vernon, somebody ought to say something about that. This means that when we come together and celebrate Dr. King, there is one question. Are we really ready for Dr. King? Somebody said, are we really ready for Dr. King? In 1968, here's what Dr. King proposed in where we go from here. Hear this. Let us stop fantasizing about the dream and let us hear the real concrete proposals Dr. King made when he was shot and killed in Memphis, Tennessee. Here's what he said. We can help to alleviate this pain and help to fix this crisis with ensuring a living wage for every worker in America. He proposed in where we go from here a guaranteed job for every American. I told you we wasn't ready for Dr. King. And then finally, he said, a guaranteed income for everybody that takes the personal responsibility to work for a living. He was assassinated because his popularity in approaches and concrete ideas like this were not popular, but they were moral and they were right. And to honor Dr. King's life is to take seriously those agendas that he presented when he was shot and killed. SCLC will continue to advocate for economic justice for everybody, black people, white people, poor people, and all people, until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Tonight, as we consider the history of SCLC, we ponder back to 1972. There was a young on fire activist who had a spirit and mind and heart to advance the cause of human and civil rights in Kansas City for all people particularly black people in Kansas City. He connected with SCLC national leaders, such as the Reverend Joseph Lowry, and others on the national level, such as the Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth. And he pursued the vision of having an SCLC chapter which was uncommon for it not to be in the South, but he pursued the vision to have an SCLC chapter 
right here in Kansas City. It was that young, on fire activist and preacher with a mustache so big you could hardly see his lips. That on fire preacher and activist with an afro so big he needed two pigs to fork it out. That young activist and preacher who had a call from God Almighty on his life and he assembled a vanguard of activists and leaders and ministers and clergy and those who were down for the cause for the freedom of black people and pulled them together and said, we're not going to Washington, D.C. We're going to do a resurrection city, a poor people city right here in Kansas City. And so they assembled people who were willing to put their necks on the line for poor people. And they gathered their tents together at the Mill Creek Park at the Country Club Plaza. And some 300 Kansas Cityans, black and white, rich and poor, north and south, east and west, camped out at the Mill Creek Park some people don't know that even before the other movements protested there, it was SCLC and then activists, soon to be clergymen, now U.S. Congressman Emmanuel Cleaver that paved the way for the spirit of protest and justice in Kansas City. And somebody ought to say something about that. Here we are in 2022. Now the celebration is 53 years old and the chapter is 50 years old and we're still here. And U.S. Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, the honorable U.S. Congressman Emanuel Cleaver is still here serving that community from the 5th District of Missouri. Tonight, we honor the Honorable U.S. Congressman Emmanuel Cleaver II! Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Uh, just so there would be no confusion, there were a lot of people. There were a lot of people who helped get this going. Um, I think when Bishop Tyndall, in those early days, uh, introduced us to the radio uh, in terms of, of publicity, and that exploded uh, the the uh, participation in SCLC. But I appreciate this. Uh, very much. Uh, the sad thing, I did uh, Dr. Joseph Lowry's eulogy about three months ago in Atlanta. He was the last of the founders. Uh, C.K. Steele, Fred Shuttlesworth, Joe Lowry, Ralph Abernathy, Martin Luther King. And uh, Joe Lowry was the last one. He was 96 uh, when, he, when he died. Uh, but the, the thing I, I want you to understand, I'm, I'll sit down. Is some of those problems are, are still hanging around. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, Pat Jones, Macklin, and I went to HBCU Prairie View. And, and, and hopefully you can understand the voting issue right here. The most logical thing to do is what's been done for years, and that is students vote in the student union. But what the, uh, the, the county, county did, Waller County, because you had, you know, uh, 5,000 uh, black and brown students right there. They moved the voting to Hempstead, Texas. Shut down the voting right there in, on the campus, which made it easy. 
And those kinds of things, I want you to understand, are happening all over the country. All over the country. And so uh, I don't want anybody to question the need to have uh, SCLC uh, or organizations that are out uh, still trying to do this, this fight. And as I, I said last Sunday, to show you how, how the decline, I want everybody to understand this. Strom Thurmond, considered to be the last of the Dixies in, in Congress, voted for the Voting Rights Act. Strom Thurmond. Mm -hmm. We cannot celebrate 50 years without celebrating those whose shoulders upon which we stand. There are three other individuals who could not be here tonight who we honor as charter members still serving with SCLC GKC. One of them who is here virtually with us, not in present, is Brother Leon Dixon, who gave the initial $100 for SCLC to be officially chartered in the state of Missouri, and Brother Leon Dixon was integral to the development of academic programs, mentoring programs, and the activism that emerged from SCLC. Today, Brother Leon Dixon continues to be an elder within our community, advancing the causes of civil and human rights. He is an ed educator, an activist, an intellectual, and an historian, and he is so very valuable to our community. Tonight, SCLC honors charter member, Brother Leon Dixon. for Brother Leon Dixon. SCLC also owes a debt of gratitude to two other persons as well, actually three, who have been so very integral to the history of SCLC also. One of our elders is not here physically, but she is here virtually with us. She has such passion for SCLC that recently she penned a very articulate and in-depth history of the local chapter of SCLC. In her passion and spirit, she is still committed to the work of civil and human rights. We are thankful for her being a charter member, a founding member of SCLC, and we are grateful for the steadfast service of sister and matriarch, Ella Tolbert of Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> Finally, there are two other individuals who have been with SCLC for a long, long time. Somebody say a long, long time. One of them is not here with us today, but he is attending virtually. And it can hardly be stated sufficiently the role that he has played and what he has meant to the life of SCLC. We cannot meet tonight without uttering the name the Reverend Dr. Nelson Fuzzy Thompson. Let us give God praise for him. We have named a luncheon after Dr. Thompson in honor of his service in developing and maintaining the celebrations over the course of so many years. And SCLC of Greater Kansas City will always be indelibly marked by the ministry and anointing of Reverend Dr. Nelson Fuzzy Thompson. Yet he had a sidekick, a white sidekick, that for 48 years, the Reverend Sam Ernest Mann served SCLC 
And for 38 of those years, he was the chairman of the board for the 40 years that Dr. Fuzzy was the president of the local chapter of SCLC. He is affectionately known in circles as the great prophet. And many have asked, how does a white man from Alabama pastor a black church in the middle of the urban core on 12th Street for 40 years and serve for civil rights and human rights for black people for so many years? He is an unusual, uncommon servant of the Lord and would be here tonight if it were not for safety reasons and precautions tonight. SCLC of Greater Kansas City honors for 48 years of service to the Kansas City community, the Reverend Samuel Ernest Mann. One last person is here. He has served for 48 years as well. He is with us tonight. If it had not been for his political sophistication and savvy, ensuring the SCLC of Greater Kansas City was supported and sustained by the civic community and government community and public community, then SCLC would not have thrived for so many years. It was him, not only his political savvy, but leveraging the influence with the grassroots. He is a firm believer that power does not rest from the top down, but power rests from the bottom up. Who knows what I'm talking about in here? He is a pastor. He is a community shepherd. He has been a leader of movements and advocacy in Kansas City for over 55 years of his life. We are thankful and grateful that we have still with us today ensuring that SCLC continues the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., our champion, our bold freedom fighter, who is with us tonight, none other than the Honorable Bishop James D. Tyndall Sr. Won't you rise to your feet? give honor and praise to Almighty God, to Dr. Vernon Howard, Reverend Dr. Wallace Hartsfield in his absence, and to the speaker tonight and our Honorable Reverend Emmanuel Cleaver. I thank God for this opportunity and, of course, uh, SCLC, uh, I've been a part of it because of uh, of Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Cleaver. He, he is the one that began the chapter in Kansas City and invited myself and Reverend Dr. Jesse L. Douglas to be a part of the local chapter. And I must say uh, tonight, before I take my seat, that it was for 10 years we had the celebration right here at Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church. And they are the, the congregation as well as the pastor is to be commended for this beautiful sanctuary yeah. here on Linwood Boulevard. Yeah. They have really transformed this beautiful church. And I wanna thank uh, 
Reverend Hartsville, for the opportunity for us to be back here tonight. It's only befitting that we come here, and I thank God for him, the Congregation of Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church, and thank God for the CLC. I just want to take a few moments this evening to also recognize and acknowledge some individuals. First, I want to take a few moments to thank Dr. Vernon Percy Howard Jr. for his continued and steadfast leadership that he has provided this great organization known as the Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Greater Kansas City. Please join me and thanking Dr. Howard for his continued leadership. And to those luminaries of service and the persons of Bishop James D. Tyndall and Dr. Samuel Ernest Mann, who for decades have been the moral compass for our community I say thank you. And certainly to those recognized charter members who breathed life into this great chapter and that provided the initial vision to organize and mobilize people of our community to stand up for justice, to stand up for righteousness, and to stand up for truth. I also say thank you to you. I also want to thank those individuals and sponsors whose financial support makes this evening possible. I would also ask for all of our elected public officials who are present here this evening to stand and be recognized. Amen. We're not only thankful for your presence this evening, but we remain thankful for your service. I also want to ask for the board members of SELC of KC to please stand and also be recognized for your continued commitment to advancing our vision for a society that one day we will see justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Would those board members please stand and be recognized? <clears throat> we recognize that this evening would not be possible without your continued leadership and commitment. <clears throat> it's hard for me to imagine that this year marks the 50th year we have gathered as a community to commemorate the life and the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. What's even harder to imagine is that the struggle for justice and equality for which he dedicated and ultimately gave his life are as relevant today as they were in 1968. And I remember as a youngster coming with my dad to some of the earlier mass celebrations at that time, they were held at St. Stephen's Baptist Church. We would stay to the very end as Dad was always charged with the responsibility of counting the offering after the service. And we would leave late, but I would leave with a renewed sense of hope that better days were ahead. I would leave with the same type of hope that I began to later understand was the hope that was the inspiration of the movement of the 1950s and 60s, which predated me, as this will mark my 50th birthday year. But I would imagine that that sense of renewal that I was feeling in the 70s and the 80s, as I would leave those same mass celebrations then, was the same type of renewal that those who attended the mass meetings at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church experienced during the beginning of the movement of the Montgomery Bus Boycott. 
These mass celebrations serve as our continued calling to keep the faith in spite of the difficulties of today and tomorrow. And you know, one would have thought that 50 years, that after 50 years, we would be in a place in our society where black lives matter. They would be valued more than perhaps the life of Emmett Till in 1955. However, we are reminded that the same degree of callous and disregard was evoked upon the lives of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and as a matter of fact, a recent NPR report from just one year ago reported that at least 135 unarmed black men and women were fatally shot by the police since 2015. And yes, even some within our own community. One would have thought that after 50 years, we would be at a place in our society where the right to vote, for which I may remind you that countless and nameless individuals gave their lives would be an unmistakable reality for all those who wanted to cast a ballot. Need I remind anyone of Bloody Sunday on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, which ultimately pricked the conscience of America and brought into being the 1965 Voting Rights Act? However, we are reminded by a recent study conducted by the Brennan's, Brennan Center for Justice that voter suppression within our communities of color is as rampant today as it was during the era of Jim Crow, including new restrictive legislation, discriminatory voter, poll, uh, voter roll purges, long lines in closed polling places, voter intimidation and misinformation, and efforts to overthrow elections through litigation by invalidating ballots cast by mail. One could conclude that the efforts today, in fact, are more advanced than they were prior to 1965. And finally, one would have thought that after 50 years, that mob violence that often led to the lynchings and killings of black lives would have long dissipated. One would think that such barbaric acts of violence would be a thing of the past. But need I remind you of what transpired on Capitol Hill on January 6th of 2021? That insurrection was fueled with the same type of hate and violence by the same type of mob that terrified black communities across the South. Now, I don't bring all of this up on this 50th anniversary to discourage you. I am simply sharing a cautionary tale that history has a way of repeating itself. Unless you become acutely aware of the history that has brought us to this point in time. We must remain as vigilant today in our quest for justice and equality as those for whom we have and will honor this evening. And so as we, as we press forward in pursuit of justice and equality, let us do so in the same creative and redemptive spirit of love that was the hallmark of Dr. King's Christian faith and the inspiration for the message that he would share with the world. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we're going to have music and our offertory appeal. Bishop James Spence. Dr. Howard asked me to also give this uh, a 12 point uh, urban council focus on the areas toward liberating our, inner, our people in the inner city. But this is a time when everybody can participate in the service. And of course it's going to be just a little different tonight uh, and as a, as, a, uh, as a preacher and pastor for a long, long time. Uh, this is very, very new to me. And I say it's new to me because I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask you to give right now. I'm going to ask you to give when you go out the door. Now, that's very new to me. <laughs> uh, Dr. Howard, 
told me to do that, I, and that's, that's the way we're going to give tonight. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's very, very difficult for nonprofits, particularly uh, civil rights organizations, to function except that uh, you help the organization to function through your financial giving. This is the only way. We, we can't continue to ask other people to help us in our struggle. We've got to help ourselves. Hello, somebody. My mama used to say, God helps those who help themselves. And I want, I want you to know that it's very important that you uh, give as you go out the door. I have $100 I'm going to give as I go out the door tonight. Those of you who can give $100, or more, won't you give that as you leave the premises and, and you hear this wonderful speaker tonight? If you don't have $100, give what you can. Give what you can give. But give so that SCLC can have the function uh, next year. Because this organization does not just function uh, on Martin Luther King's birthday, but it functions every day of the week, every day of the month, every day of the year. And it is you that helps to keep this organization going. And we would appreciate very much that you would support the organization through your financial giving uh, tonight. The Urban Council is made up of the NAACP, SCLC, the Urban League of Greater Kansas City, the National Black United Front of Kansas City, and the Urban Summit of Kansas City. The Urban Council of Kansas City is a collaboration of legal civil rights organizations aligned with post-civil rights era liberation movement leaders in order to move, in order to free urban core residents of Kansas City who are predominantly black and brown and poor whites from the decade-long economic and social oppression which has historically affected inner-city dwellers. The Urban Council invites all persons to own and embrace these priorities by making membership or affiliation with one of the five Vanguard organizations joining us each Friday on the virtual Zoom platform sponsored by the Urban Summit as we engage, strategize, and work together to bring liberation to our people. Now these are the 12 points that we will be working toward in 2022. The removal of Kansas City Police Department Chief Rick Smith and the implementation of anti-racist community and evidence-based reforms, which have been demanded by civil rights groups and liberation movement groups since the 2013 KCPD killing of Ryan Stoke. We will deal with the fair and just distribution of federal American Rescue Act and Build Back Better funds to directly, uh, to directly benefit urban black and brown and poor whites who have been disproportionately, disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and who have been disproportionately suffered from oppression historically uh, and the systematic denial of equal access to equal opportunity and access to economic, educational, housing and public health resources. The official opening of the, bank, of the WE Bank, an independent black-owned financial institution within the urban core, for the urban core with policies and business practices that benefit the unique set of economic challenges plaguing urban core residents, businesses, agencies, organizations, and entrepreneurs. The full and complete implementation of reparations for black Kansas Cityans who are the descendants of slaves 
in response to the 400 years of oppression, including the 250 years of chattel slavery, scientifically proven through scholarly research to be the prime and leading cause contributing to the economic, psychological, political, and educational brokenness in need of repair in the black community. The founding of an independent black school, elementary and secondary levels. Hello, somebody. Serving the unique needs of black children in Kansas City who have historically and are currently too often miseducated and undereducated, so often void of adequate STEM learning, cultural knowledge of self, and excellence in, in literacy. In literacy. Number six, the launch and execution of the Urban Council elected officials accountability and rating system, which will track and publish the performance of elected representatives as to legislative ordinances, voting records, policy stances, level of resources, directed to the black community, attendance of community, significant community events. Which is kind of embarrassing when you ask the black elected officials to stand and only one stand. That's embarrassing for a night like tonight. Hello, somebody. The adamant opposition and blockage of the Republican National Convention being hosted in Kansas City, Missouri. Hello, somebody. Due to the Republican Party's insistence, denial of voting rights for blacks and marginalized groups is generally complicit and silenced amid the January 6, 2021 insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, its refusal to protect the principles of democracy, its objections to a living minimum wage of the working poor in America and its reckless and immoral promulgation of gun policies, which contribute to the unacceptable loss of young urban blacks and suburban whites caught in the cycle of inner city and suburban mass shootings, violence and its objection to a living and minimum wage for working poor in America. Hello, somebody. Number eight, the transformation of the Central City Economic Development Sales Tax Initiative and Commission, which we call One City, which is birthed from our grassroots work within the Urban Summit and members of the Urban Council and its initiatives, which have been largely unresponsive to the original version of grassroots leaders who brought the initiative into being and which has appointees who have ignored fundamental principles and desires of the community and constituency which created its platform and public service. I wish I could talk about this tonight because it really hurts my heart because we, we appoint people and they get where they want to go and then they forget where they come from. It's, it's, a, it's a problem that we have. It's, a, it's a definitely a problem. Number nine, the making of Kansas City into a living wage city. By expanding the 2017 living wage ordinance initiated and passed by our grassroots coalition in 2017 through, petition, through initiative petition so that it applies to all workers in its municipality persons who take the personal responsibility to work for a living should receive a living wage. Amen. Number 10, the full funding, groundbreaking, and completion of the Western Baptist Bible College District Road Redevelopment Project, which has been stalled by political and other factors. Yet this economic development project is critical to the advancement and well-being of residents within the urban core as it provides housing and educational stability to the urban core while supporting historic and new 
emerging black businesses, black institutions, and black service providers. I wish I could talk about this tonight. Seems like the city can build a garage faster than they can build a house in the inner city. They can build a garage downtown faster than they can build a new house in Kansas City, in the central city. Number 11, the eradication, the eradication of homelessness in Kansas City. Hello, somebody. Via sufficient funding, wraparound social services, emergency shelter, and affordable housing for the poorest of the poor. Finally, number 12, the passage of upcoming health levy and the drafting of the Marshall Public Health Plan in Kansas City to ensure every urban core resident has access to affordable, quality health care and pathways to avoid violence, which is an axis around which the public health crisis in Kansas City exists. These are what we're going to try to do. And these are the things we're working on in 2022. Pray for us as we go forth. But more than that, you can help when you walk out the door tonight, give an offering that we might be able to meet these goals that we so desperately need here in our city. May the Lord God bless you real good. Always is our prayer. Thank you, Bishop Tindall. We're going to proceed now with uh, uh, music, a celebration of music from Reverend Alberta Walker and the SCLC 50th Anniversary Ensemble. Amen. I know I've been changed. The angels in heaven and signed my name. But before we get started, since we don't have the names on the program and some of them say you don't have to introduce me. But for those, who you, those of you who don't know, I'd like to introduce, starting from my left, Mr. Chris Hazelton from Oregon. Mr. Robert Adams on the drums. Mr. Timothy Bailey on keyboards. Mr. Brian Wilson. Miss Cammy Woodard. And Miss Stephanie Hicks Mead. And I'm Reverend Alberta Walker. God bless you. Yeah. 
Now the songwriter had stated that the question was asked, how can a black cow that eat green grass and produce white milk But God's lovers hurry up attention Took my black soul full of sin Dipped it in red blood And I came out Wider than snow Wider than snow You know that I ain't sin Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie gets to this podium and proclaims the word of the Lord. We are on our way. We are determined to honor those Councilwoman Collins who has brought us this far along the way. We are determined. We are determined. And one so very special dear to us, whom transitioned to be with the Lord last year. His loss so very deep in its own right. But coming after Pastor Briscoe, coming after Reverend Kenny Ray, coming after Dr. Wallace Hartsfield, coming after Dr. Fuzzy, and then there was Taylor, and our hearts again were wounded and still are and we will never forget those who sacrificed and paved the way for us
His son now serves as chairman of the board. His wife, Mrs. Fields, is here. Other daughters, Denise is here. Praise God. Carla is here. Thank the Lord. And other relatives, grandchildren, we praise God that the legacy lives on. Here's what we know about all those who fight for justice, that though they might transition on to be with the Lord, the legacy lives on. And we will never forget, we will never forget. And tonight we honor freedom fighter, decades long servant to SCLC and the community, Taylor Fields. It is an honor and a privilege to stand in celebration with SELC Kansas City's for their 50th anniversary celebration to commemorate this holiday season for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It is equally an honor and a privilege to be able to introduce tonight's speaker, Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie, who was born in Baltimore, Maryland, and who uh, is a legacy in and of herself for so many reasons. She is the granddaughter of a founder of our beloved Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. She is uh, a mother par excellence and was a faithful wife to her Stan McKenzie, which bore three children and a couple of grandchildren, and her legacy is so secured in African Methodist Episcopal Church. And since she was the first elected and consecrated woman to serve with distinction in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, she served in Swaziland and South Africa, she served in the 13th Episcopal District, and she retired from the 10th Episcopal District in Texas. But more than that, 
dr murphy mckenzie has mentored so many in fact during the pandemic she established a leadership group online that was first formulated ah selah to give us a break to give us a deep break a group of women who were forward thinking business people clergy people those who needed to understand that is important to break i promise you that bishop mckenzie's message message tonight will certainly pique your curiosity prod your heart and leave you thinking what must i do to make sure that the legacy of not only dr martin luther king but the legacy in which we leave behind for those who come after us i remember verbatim the first sermon that i ever heard bishop mckenzie preach at a national convention of our sorority and i'll never forget it her theme was somebody ought to do something and i share that with you tonight somebody ought to do something and so i dare you to pray and watch god move in a mighty way as we celebrate with bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie. All right, God, have your way and watch everybody in the city of Kansas City be blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Cami Woodard.
church say amen. It's all right to say amen again. Truly it is all right to praise God in the house of God. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I said truly. It is all right to praise God in the house of God. Let us pray. God do it again. Amen. to the members of SCLC of Greater Kansas City on your 50th anniversary, to Dr. Vernon P. Howard, President, Wesley Fields Esquire, Chairman of the Board, Reverend Sam Mann, Vice President, Congressman Emmanuel Cleaver II, good longtime friend, good to see you again. And thank you for inviting me to add my voices to the voices that have been lifted tonight. To my sisters in public service, God bless you always for your prayers and for your support that I remain standing because you stand with me. To my cousin, Roger Murphy Matthews, it's good to see you and be with you here today. Now I've been invited to give a message and you didn't say whether I was speaking or preaching and so if I was preaching, I'd take a text. And I'd take Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12, from the New International Version. It says this, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairers of broken walls, restorers of streets with dwellings. Can I read it from the Message Bible? If you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins. If you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadow lies will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. I'll give you a full life in the emptiest places. Firm muscles, strong bones. You will be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use the old rubble of past lives to build anew. Rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything. Restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate make the community live again. And so our theme and thought of meditation in this moment is says, yes, we can. Tell somebody, yes, we can. Come on, find somebody else and say, yes, we can. Y'all been sitting so sedity and quiet all night long. Come on, look at somebody and say, yes, we can. Y yes, we can. Yes, yes, we can. Beloved, today is the one day a year where we remember what Dr. King said that we cannot afford to worship the God of hate or bow down before the altar of re retaliation. This is one day of the year where we remember what he said, that the oceans of history are made turbulent by the ever rising tides of hate. And history is cluttered with the wreckage of nations and individuals that pursue this self-defeating path of hate. This is the one day of the year. This is the time of the year we remember what he said about that force which all of the great religions have seen as the supreme unifying principle of life, love. Love is somehow the key that unlocks the door, which leads to ultimately a new reality. And love, love seemingly has gotten lost in the sauce of divisive politics and an unrelenting pandemic. This is the day, this is the day 
We remember his call for unity and love in the face of evil that black men and white men and the sons of slaves and slave owners can sit down together at the table of the decision to create a beloved community. This is the day. The day we remember what he said, that we must find a nonviolent way to give voice to those suffering under unjust policies and practice and shed light on repressive systems of injustice that exist overtly and covertly in our communities and our countries. But we must do more than remember what he said on the one day we remember what he said. Dr. King was not murdered for his oratory skills. Uh, he wasn't shot down because his voice was a rich basal tone quality to it. Uh, he wasn't killed because of his unique gifting of using anaphoral phrases consecutively. Uh, he wasn't killed uh, for how his speeches were biblically based yet included overtones as diverse as Reinhold, Niebuhr, and Gandhi. He was killed uh, because he wanted America to change. Uh, he was killed because he wanted Americans to change. King's words struck a nerve and agitated a nation which was comfortable in her sins and still is. His words pulled back the covers to reveal the un ugly undercourage of racial hatred and privilege and we know whose privilege we talking about. King dared to say what was needed to be said. Uh, now is the time. Uh, we've been waiting on justice for a long time. Uh, and waiting for justice is unsettling uh, and it's frustrating uh, for those who are oppressed. Uh, frustrating for victimized soul. Uh, he began to hammer the chains of ignorance and uncivil discord, hate and hopelessness, racism uh, upon the anvil of pride and arrogance uh, across uh, an America that refused to embark upon a new egalitarian relationship with all America's black, brown, red, striped, polka dot, yet plaid. Uh, he dared to dream uh, and then inspired others to dream brave dreams of freedom and justice. Uh, even in the midst of segregated suffering, uh, the dreams they were willing to live and die for, oops, they did. He was willing to push what others wanted, when others wanted to move with all deliberate speed uh, in the heat of the day, in the grit and the grind uh, of the unjust practice and unjust attitudes uh, in our nation that promise life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for some of us, uh, not all of us, uh, a fulfillment for some of us, uh, and an empty promise to the rest of us. I'll say amen, Vashti. Amen, girl, girl. Amen, amen, amen. King took a stand when he could have been hung from a tree, dragged behind a truck, set on fire, beaten, tortured, or mutilated because you wanted to register to vote. Oh, that's happening right now. The names have changed. The names have changed from Reverend George Lee, who was killed in Mississippi because he refused to stop voter registration efforts. Names have changed uh, uh, from Lamar Smith, who was shot on the front lawn of a Mississippi courthouse because he was organizing blacks to vote. Uh, names have changed from Mega Evers and James Earl Cheney and Andrew Goodman and Michael Scherner in Philadelphia, Mississippi. The names have changed uh, from Addie Mae Collins and Niece McNear and Carol Robertson and Cynthia, Cynthia Wesley, all because they went to church in Birmingham one Sunday morning. The names have changed through the Emmanuel 9 murdered uh, in Emmanuel A. M. and E. Church in South Carolina. The names have changed, but the stories remain the same. Uh, instead of King and Evers, uh, it's Travon, uh, it's George Floyd, uh, it's Ahmaud Arbery, uh, it's Breonna Ted. Names have changed. Uh, crushed by racial hatred, uh, afflicted by dehumanization, uh, permissive, permissive evil, uh, because I can and I can get away from it, uh, killed by terror, uh, by who, uh, uh, who harass uh, uh, and oppose rather than protect, uh, murdered by living in a state of constant fear which suffocates the life out of us, uh, suffocates our potential, uh, our outlook and our hope, uh, a country uh, and groups of people who just don't want to change. Amen, Vashti. It's all right, girl. Now, right now, we must stop playing with this holiday. Stop teasing people by giving lip service once a year to a man in the movement. 
We must do more than remember what he said and stop reducing who he was and what he did just to oratory giftedness. Now, right now, we must refuse to downgrade the meaning of his legacy every time we espouse the emotive feel good of the day and refuse to do the hard work of justice. And justice means you got to work hard at it. Why? Because justice has never been a one and done. Because unjust evil may depart for a season, but it's always looking for a return and push the pendulum back in its direction. Now, right now, we must put feet to the messages. As this year's theme says, start shifting priorities to create the beloved community. Now, right now, we must remind ourselves of the potential and the possibility that we are the ones that are called to change the world. Now, right Right now, uh, somebody's got to step up to the plate again. Uh, we need some more Martins uh, and Martiniques. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Glory to God, uh, who will not be appreciated by the broader community and may not be appreciated by your own. Uh, at a time when speaking the truth to power uh, could cost you your life and your livelihood. Did I say now, right now? Uh, now, right now, we must gear up the cross. Uh -huh. Our own Red Sea uh, with demagogues and the enemies of our freedom breathing down our necks uh, or put a knee on our necks. Uh, now, right now, uh, we must remember that every generation uh, must cross the Edmund Pettit Bridge uh, of their day. Uh, march on the imperial powers of wa Washington. Now, right now, uh, boycott, boycott where we are discriminated uh, by where you're hired. Uh, protest against the dismantling of justice. Did I say now, right now? I said now, right now, uh, because they are paused now to dismantle American democracy. Now must now. Uh, we must be the ones called to change the world. Uh, not just anybody, uh, but somebody who's got grace, uh, guts, and courage uh, to get it done. Uh, did I say now right now? I think I did. I think I did say now right now. We need someone to answer the call to partner with God uh, to transform, as Dr. King said, the jangling discords of our nation. Uh, be the working watchmen and watch women on the walls of this nation. Uh, be willing to roll up our sleeves and do the tough work of justice uh, now and right now. Uh, to return to the unfinished business of previous generations uh, and make it our business to finish. Uh, now, right now, uh, do what others deem impossible unless you put it into the hands of God. Uh, beloved, uh, what they do to us today uh, will be done to you tomorrow. Uh, don't you fall asleep on this thing here. Uh, whatever oppressive laws are put into place today, uh, goes on the books today, uh, can be a uh, suppressive laws uh, on the books against you tomorrow. Uh, don't you understand what they did to the Jews in Nazi wasn't illegal, but it was legal. Uh, and what they're trying to make uh, legal today could kill you. <sighs> now, right now, now, right now, we must prick the conscience of our country to put compassion back in the budget, put people over profit, and fight for clean water and clean air and alternative sources of energy now, right now, so that our children and our children's children will be able to breathe fresh air and drink uncontaminated water and eat healthy food, uh, not subject to a melting ice cap and rising seawater and dust storms and wildfires in a depleted water table without becoming environmental refugees. And the thought is frightening that our legacy to the future of our children and children's children may be laying the groundwork for them to become environmental refugees seeking safety in other countries. Breathe. Breathe. Now, right now, we must put feet to our prayers. We must begin to pray again like David prayed. Oh, Lord, how long, oh, Lord? We must sing to the glory of God. We must stand still like Moses to see the salvation of the Lord. Ha ha, we have to do this all again. We got to put on the whole armor. Oh God, did I say the whole armor? The whole armor 
of God because we need divine protection as we go into battles of culture and trade a whole armor. We got to put on the truth uh, and be the truth uh, and tell the truth because uh, a lie is still a lie no matter how many tells you tell a lie. Yeah. Now, right now, we have to put on righteousness uh, so we'll do whatever is right uh, at the right time. Hold up that shield of faith real high to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Uh, get your sword out. I'm talking about the word of God uh, because we live and work with folk uh, who do not have uh, our best interests at heart. Uh, we got to speak truth to power and hold power accountable to the truth they represent. Uh, we got to step outside of self and self-interest uh, to do the work uh, that of an ever-changing world demands. Uh, we got to plow new grounds, baby. We got to reach new groups of people uh, and do the work more than makes us feel good, uh, but do the work that it is good. Amen, Vashti. Eh? Y'all still here? Anybody still awake? Uh, Y'all around? Are you breathing? Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, you still here? You still here? You still here? If I was preaching, I'd take a text. The text is out of Isaiah 58. Uh, and I would direct your attention because Pastor Isaiah is preaching up in here. And he is preaching in tough times and he delivers several prophetic oracles that include a warning to those who corrupt justice. That a foreign nation, Assyria, would be used as an instrument of judgment against Judah. And Isaiah is being sent by God to harden the hearts of the people in order to bring about repentance and restoration. Let me tell you a little secret. Uh, let me tell you a little secret about preachers. We love to preach sermons. I didn't make people shout and go home happy, don't we? Yeah, we do. We love to preach sermons that have impact, impact, impact. We're happy when God's word does what God wants God's word to do. Ah, but Isaiah had a tough assignment. He had to preach a hard word to a hard group of people because they just didn't want to change. There was also the messianic oracle, God will watch over his people and ultimately destroy their enemies. And God would use the future soon and coming king to bring about a new good place. And this new soon and coming king will bring about justice and righteousness and an era of peace. Isaiah's utopia or proclamation uh, declares the establishment of a new era, one characterized by the reign of love and justice and community. A dramatic transformation would take place. A peaceful reign where the natural enemies would live in peace and harmony and safety together. And it would be so easy that a child could supervise over the entire structure. And so in spite of what the world looks like or what we may be going through, there's some part of us that is drawn to what prophet uh, Pastor Isaiah is preaching about. He's preaching about the hopes and dreams that are unfolding in an uncertain time amid the disobedience of God's people. He is preaching a captivating possibility unfolding on the center stage of human struggle. Isaiah's prophecy is a contrast between uh, the Messiah manifesto of judgment uh, who is sent to bind up the brokenhearted, uh, proclaim freedom for the oppressed, uh, and release from darkness to prisoners, uh, and proclaim, uh, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Uh, Pastor Isaiah's sermon was not appeal uh, to feeble possibility thinking. Uh, he was not preaching a pie uh, in the sky, wish upon a star, our promises for better things to come. Isaiah helps us to rethink our behavior and repent of our sins and relight our candles of faith in justice in a dark world that defers hope, crushes dreams, snatches faith with fear, and distorts reality. Well, the people thought they were doing what they were supposed to do. Let me say that again. The people thought they were doing uh, what they were supposed to do. Uh, they fast, uh, that's what they were supposed to do. Uh, they prayed, uh, that's what they were supposed to do. Uh, but there was no answer to the prayers because they did not fast right. Uh, Isaiah says uh, that this people continued in their sins uh, that makes their spiritual activities, listen now, more dedicated to themselves uh, instead of being dedicated to God. So fasting and prayer was for show and plat 
platform. Uh, it was for performance. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's almost like preaching in the dark to people who can't see uh, and refuse to hear because uh, uh, they don't want to change. Uh, doesn't Jesus remind us from the Sermon on the Mount uh, uh, and on the plain uh, that we don't pray like everybody else pray to be seen? Uh, uh -huh. we, we go into our secret place, uh, into our secret closet. Uh, we don't give to be seen. Uh -huh. uh, spiritual disciplines were not for show or performance. Uh, the fast that God had chosen uh, wasn't an affliction for a day, uh, a practice or a performance, uh, but it was a lifestyle. Uh, it is uh, to be just. Uh, loose the bands of wickedness. Uh, the ones we tied on ourselves. Uh, it is let the unjustly oppressed go free uh, as a lifestyle. Uh, not a moment. Uh, not a minute. Uh, not one day a year. Come here, God's prophet Micah. Uh, how would you say this? Uh, uh -huh. He would say, God has shown you what is good. Uh, so what does the Lord require? Uh, that you act justly. Uh, that you love mercy. Uh, and you walk humbly before the Lord. Come on, preach, Vashti. Uh, this is an engaging lifestyle of charity. Uh, provide food uh, for those who want it. Uh, doing more than breaking off a piece of bread. Uh, but reaching in your pocket uh, and intentionally provide bread uh, to those who need it. Uh, provide sheltering. Uh, and clothing. Uh, give them a drink of water even while they're standing in line trying to vote. Oh, it's against the law now. Uh, uh -huh. MLK said it this way. Every step uh, towards the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, uh, and justice. Jesus, when did we see you hungry? Uh, when did we see you thirsty? Uh, when did we see you in prison? As you have done it unto the... Thank God for Bible study students. Hallelujah. And when you do these things, Pastor Isaiah tells us that light will spring forth. The glory of the Lord shall be your reward. And then you will call and God will answer your prayer. And you will rise from obscurity and God will guide and your soul will be satisfied. And so then he says in, in, in verse 12, then gather those who are with you gather those who are with you gather those who are with you uh -huh. uh, build the old places of waste raise up the foundations of the former generations don't dismiss them because you think they're too old they did something to leave to you to build on. And then you shall repair the breach and make the streets safe to live in again. You will be called repairers of the breach and the restorers of the streets. And then you will live fully even in the emptiest of places. How do you do this? Glad you asked. The text says, get rid of unfair practices. Stop blaming victims. Quit gossiping about other people's stuff. And your lies will light up in the darkness. Uh -huh. And you shall be bathed in sunlight. And then God says, I'm going to show you exactly where to go. Huh. So, so, tell your neighbor so. Oh, Lord, are y'all still here? Did y'all go away again? Uh -huh. So, so, so. So how we do this, here's your call to serve. We can get rid of unfair practices. Say yes, you can. We can stop blaming victims. Say we can do this. We can be generous with the hungry and those struggling to survive. We can do this. Come on, find somebody close by and say, we can do this. Go find somebody else and say, we can do this. Now take your pointing finger and put it in the middle of your chest and say, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this today.
Anybody can float a boat on calm seas and watch paint dry on the walls. Anybody can handle the pristine environment and well-cultured good neighborhood Temple Mosque Church. Anybody can lead the go-along and get-along crowd. Not really interested in getting better, but just getting by. But God ain't looking for anybody. God looking for you. God is looking for you to serve. God is looking for you to take a stand. God is looking for you. God's looking for somebody who's not going to wither in the face of evil or faint at the sight of blood. Who can handle a rough crowd. Who can speak their language. God is looking for you. God is looking for you to handle special interest groups who are only interested in themselves. God has so arranged and so orchestrated events and experiences in your life to get you this place and to get you to this time. God has been working all your life to get you to the right door, to the right desk, to the right job, to the right church. God has been working all your life to get you to the right places and right time. It takes courage to think for yourself in a world that tries to mold and shape your opinions 24 7. It takes courage to speak up when your job and your title and your livelihood is on the line. It takes courage to be creative when doing so will make people think you're just trying to make a profit. It takes courage to stare down hell when you are afraid of hell, confronted by hell, when you're outnumbered in hell, when you go through hell, when it's the last thing on your mind, and then tell hell where to go. Today, my brothers and sisters, we will have to find the courage of our convictions. We're going to have to do it. We can't turn around and wait for others to do it for us. You can't wait for policymakers to pay to make the policy. It ain't just going to happen. We have to answer the call to serve, and we got to stand together. Because when we stand together, it makes people uncomfortable. We have to present a common front against a common demagogy, a common evil, and it always make, make people nervous. They will succeed if you allow them to divide and conquer us, but we must be smarter than that. They will succeed if we allow them to divert our attention uh, from the major issues, uh, we must be smarter than that. Uh, they will succeed uh, if we get bogged down and who takes the credit. Uh, they will succeed. Uh, uh -huh, uh, we must be smarter than that. Uh, they will succeed uh, if we engage in mass hy uh, hysteria uh, instead of checking the facts uh, and then check the fact checkers. Uh, they will succeed uh, if we will allow them to intimidate us uh, with threats. We must be smarter smarter than that. Uh, they will succeed uh, if we allow them uh, to limit our platform uh, and impact by trying to isolate us uh, from the community that surrounds us. Uh, we must be smarter than that. Uh, uh, they will succeed uh, if you believe them uh, when they tell you to stay uh, on your own corner, stay in your own neighborhood, stay in your own silo, hang out with your own tribe, uh, support your own self-interest, uh, and rather than the interest of the community. We must be smarter than that. Uh, we can live fully in the emptiest places. That's the promises of God. Uh, not just by criticizing the system, uh, but working to change the system. Uh, we can live fully. Uh, that's what the text says. Uh, in the emptiest of places, uh, by inconveniencing ourselves uh, for the other. Uh, get to know the law. Uh, change the laws. Uh, get the facts before you go knocking down on doors. Uh, we've got to be smarter than that. Stop blaming each other. Uh, short shooting each other. Uh, we got this thing. Uh, God promises. Uh, and this is the promise we're going to stand on. Uh, we can uh, by supporting uh, each other uh, in each other. Da -da -da. We ain't got to love each other. Uh, we ain't got to agree with each other all the time. Uh, we ain't even got to like each other. Uh, but we can stand on the promises of God and do what needs to be done. Uh, we can do this. Yes, we can. We can do this. Yes, we can. We can do this. Yes, we can. We can stand together on the word of God. And God says we can live fully even in the emptiest of places. Say yes.
take courage. Yes, we can. We gotta be smarter than that. Yes, we can. We can do this. Yes, we can. Give God praise for the word of the Lord tonight. Come on, give God praise for the word of the Lord tonight. One more time, give God praise for the word of the Lord tonight. We thank God for the young people and the youth of the Hope Center tonight. God bless you. God bless you, the young people in the house tonight from the Hope Center. God bless you. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Anybody got the courage? Yeah. Somebody shut it out. Yes, we oh. can. We thank you for being with us at this yet another MLK Mass Celebration. Go home and tell them that God works so strong in Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie that the white board members on SCLC was up shouting and dancing in the balcony. Praise God for his goodness tonight unto us. We thank God for various victories this year. We're almost done. But one of them is the hard-fought, long-fought victory that now a reality in Kansas City to continually remind us to be courageous and to walk the path that Dr. King walked is the new Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. So many people contributed to this victory. You ought to give God praise one more time. There are those who we believe from Public Works who are going to be with us that help with the installation of this. If you are here, would you please stand? If you are here, anybody from Public Works tonight? All right, very good. We thank and praise God uh, for the mayor of the city of Kansas City, Missouri, Mayor Quentin Lucas, who heard Bishop Tyndall state that it is embarrassing to have the number of elected officials here tonight at a mass celebration. Quentin Lucas, the mayor of the city of Kansas City, Missouri, sent me a text and said, please know that I'm on virtually and have to travel to see family in the morning. The mayor wanted to share that with you tonight. Amen. Amen. We are praising God for this moment and this night, and we are thankful to everybody who is involved in making this yet another wonderful celebration of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Won't you stand to your feet even now? Amen. We'll have closing music and then our benediction after the meeting.
guilty verdict was announced for Derek Chauvin in the death of George Floyd. Take a deep breath. I can breathe now. I can breathe now. I can breathe now. I heard the verdict. I saw his face. I witnessed your joy and I can breathe now. I know that I may not be there with you. I know that my baby girl will never hear my voice or feel my arms or sit in my lap, but I can breathe now because I trust that she will be cared for and I trust that the work will continue. I can breathe now because I know that there are those who heard the verdict, guilty, 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 and it gave them strength to keep fighting. I can breathe now because I heard the good news of the verdict. And I know that one police officer in somewhere USA will think twice before threatening and taking another black life. I can breathe now because you will continue to march. You will continue to fight. You will continue to shout. And you will continue to dream. I can breathe now because I know that while the struggle has not ended, the fight will go on. I can breathe now because yesterday justice rolled down like water and righteousness was a mighty strength. I can breathe now because I know that from where I sit, there is no end to those waters. They will continue to flow from generation to generation. I can breathe now. I can breathe now. I can breathe now. Don't you let them keep taking our breath away. Now unto the one yeah. in whom we breathe, yeah. live, move, and have our being. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. God bless.